Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. And so here we are. Mm. We've come to whisper into your ears, mm. you know, but uh, to your hearts as well. <laughs> all those sweet nothings that you didn't hear yesterday. That'll be our job. We've come not to kiss your lips, but to kiss your soul. Yes, what indeed. We have today. Mm -hmm. Love is still in the air, as you can see. It's a day <laughs> after Valentine, but hey. We do not stop spreading the love and positivity here. Even if you're single out there, we are still here for you. We've still got Mike who's looking for a... <laughs> but don't worry, we'll be talking with him and finding out exactly who he spent yesterday with. So, love is what keeps us going. And it could only be the love for what we do that gets us up every single morning, especially after such mm. a long evening yesterday. I know, was how like, was your evening? What did you do? Yeah, I was stuck in traffic. Oh dear, <laughs> no. Were you with Oscar? Um, you were That's with the only reason why I would be in traffic. So it's okay. I mean, hey, at least you got to spend it with somebody that you love, so that's yeah. all right, isn't true, it? Yeah. True, true, true. In any case, mm -hmm. hey, I spent all day on uh, yeah, cool. Netflix. Cool. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, you guys are welcome to a Tuesday edition here. I kind of like looked forward to today's edition. I do not know why. But yeah. hey, maybe it's because on today's edition, Mary's here. Woo -woo -woo. Hi. Hey, yeah, Mary. see, everybody wanted Mike, but I got him. <laughs> Good morning. You're I, balance. I, I always forget. I, hey, I'm not on. like. Good morning, it's great to be here Tuesday morning. Post VAR. How yes. Was and tell me, do you like my red hair? It's my first time trying it. it. Oh, oh thanks. thanks. Your Valentine hair. Yes, yeah, so oh. I'm still in the Valentine mood. You know? Woo! Oh, so good. Good to see you, Mary. I can't say enough of that because I actually missed you. I haven't Aww. been with you in over two weeks or so. So welcome. <laughs> in any case, my name is Mazino Appeal. And I'm Tita Laya Oye. So remember, if you use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC across all social media platforms, please be a part of the show. Yeah, and remember, you can also watch us live from anywhere that you might be across the world. All you need to do is download our mobile app on Google Play Store or yeah. on the iOS app. Follow us across all social media platforms, mm -hmm. talking Twitter, talking TikTok, Talking Instagram and of course Facebook, all at TVC Connect. Yes. Oh, by the way, mm. something very interesting is about to. Some, some just happened right now. Yeah. But That's something such an old line. <laughs> I know. Wow. But I just That's remembered. Like we need to let you guys know <laughs> that something very interesting is going to be happening this month. And if you love to cook, then hey, get ready because we have just the thing for you guys. Now, mm. picture this: five contestants all the ingredients that you want in the world <laughs> and all the utensils that you could use mm. all right in one place yes, the middle of the wake up nigeria cookout showcasing your talent for the world to see and you could win yeah. fantastic prizes so hopefully you're getting that picture you know we love food right here on wake up nigeria and we'd love about. for you to showcase your skills all you have to do is post a video on social media showcasing your love of cooking use mm. the hashtag wake up nigeria cookout and of course, make sure you tag at TVC Connect. Now, once you strike a chord with us, you know, mm. we'll just reach out to you. And That's just it. like that, you're in. You can't be related to Titi, you can't be related to Mike, you can't wow. be related to Mike. Uh, what I'm trying to say is <laughs> terms and conditions apply. I guess. Now, the more comments and likes that you get, the mm. higher your chances of actually making the cut. So yeah. you won't be doing it for nothing. Edge mm. out the other four contestants, and hey, mm. you'll be going home with a hundred thousand naira grand prize and yeah. so many other real good stuff. So yeah. you guys, please make sure that you get uh, get in this competition because mm -hmm. it's designed just for you. Yeah. Because you can cook. Wake up, Nigeria! Cook out. We can't wait. It's coming up. It's coming up. You need to apply it right now. Parenting with Modupe Aila, the founder of iMom Zone, a platform for mothers, a focus specifically for first-time pregnant uh, mothers, a new and also toddler uh, moms as well. And she will be discussing managing your nanny, or no. My wife should listen to this one. <laughs> now, being healthy is part of our overall lifestyle. And uh, there's something really interesting for people who have family members or friends living with cerebral palsy. Now, how physiotherapy can help people living with that disorder is on our health segment this morning. And uh, coming up, we are going to be having a performance, a musical performance from Victor Uhulu, uh, popularly known as The Piz, by the way, a fast-rising R&B and Afropop act all here inside of the studio. And finally, joining us for an interesting conversation is actor, executive producer and director Prince Tony Ogbetere, popularly known as Big Tony. Now, he made his debut as a movie director with the movie What Goes Around. Now, apart from all the other jobs he has, 
He's also starred in a potpourri of diverse projects as an actor. Can't wait to have a conversation with him in the studio. Oh, you Our guys first got self there. selfie of the morning. <laughs> yes, indeed. First picture of the morning. We always look forward to that. And mm -hmm. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, yes. Tell you guys what, let's just go straight into the weather because we have so much to talk about when it's the coffee gist. You guys are going to join us uh, then. Welcome to the edition here. Let's do the news. My name is Mazino Peel. Let's start with this story where a female citizen of the Nigeria Republic has been arrested in Zamfara State while trying to sell a child for the second time. Governor Bella Matawale, who disclosed this, says the recent trend of, selecting, uh, of selective kidnapping for ransom in Gusau, the state capital, is due to a return of bandit informants. This, he, he says, will also be tackled. Theophilus Darufai reports. Reports of an increase in ritual killings across the country has jolted many citizens. Zamfara State Governor Bello Matawale believes there's need for government at all levels and security agencies to intensify efforts to nip in the boot this new menace. On 4th January this year, police in Zamfara paraded four suspects for allegedly killing a nine-year-old and eating some parts of his body. <laughs> there were similar cases in Kano, Zaria, and other parts of the country. These prompted the House of Representatives last Wednesday to ask the federal government to declare a national emergency on the social vice. Governor Bello Matoli informs a guardian in Gusau that a female Nigerian citizen has been arrested in the state while trying to sell a child for the second time. Also worrying is the new trend of selective kidnapping. The governor attributes this to the resurgence of bandit informants living in the community. A woman from Niger Republic was arrested here in Gusau while trying to sell a child and she confessed that this is her second time in the business. Regarding kidnapping, there's no how bandits will leave the bush to come and kidnap someone in his house in the city. Governor Bello Matawali commends some Islamic clerics for their immense contributions to the unconditional release of the abducted Islamia school pupils in Tegina, Niger State. <laughs> Myself and some other Islamic clerics facilitated the release of the abducted Tegna Islamia school pupils last year. In fact, I brought the concept and I let them move. <laughs> the residences of two lecturers of the Federal University Gusau and Federal College of Education Technical have been subject to attacks and kidnapping for ransom alongside other families within Gusau and for state capital in recent times. Many feel it is the handiwork of bandit informants in the area. Theophilus Darufai, TVC News, Gusau. And that's it for the news. Do stay tuned. Time for us to check out the newspaper headlines. And we will begin this morning with the Punch newspaper. Now, the Punch newspaper has this drug business. Please tackle NDLEA. Agency detains Abba Kiari for others. Kiari runs drug cartel that passes through Brazil, Ethiopia, Nigeria. That's Brazil to Ethiopia to Nigeria. And that's coming from the NDLEA. Arrest your officers on payroll of drug barons. Police reply anti-drug agency. DCP went on alleged illegal operation while on suspension, as says uh, the federal headquarters of the NDLEA. Now, all of these stories and more you can catch in the Punch newspaper regarding this. And we also have this one. ASU begins four-week rollover strike. Governors oppose action in state varsities. Uh, still on the front page of the Punch newspaper, full scarcity, armed policemen deployed to control queues, commuters stranded, marketers complain of adulterated PMS trapped in filling stations. Now, all of these stories and more you can catch in the Punch newspaper this morning. Now, from the Punch newspaper, we head straight to the Daily Sun newspaper. And the Daily Sun has this APC chair... Race uh, narrows to Al Makura Adamu Musa. CPC elements, governors, young party members push for favored candidates. Now, here we also see this rider. Over 8,000 child soldiers recruited by armed groups in Northeast. And that's coming from UNICEF. Uh, here we also have 2023 PDP APC presidential, presidential tickets, rather. 
will determine Igbo destiny. And that's coming from Moanese. Pressure mounts an Atiku to dump presidential ambition. Now, all of these stories and more you can catch in the Daily Sun newspaper today. Oh boy, yeah. I, have, I want to say something. What, what the ladies you? were not focused on whatever it is that they were being tutored mm -hmm. in that session. They, they, were, they yes. were not, yeah. They were, they were all, it was something else. They were yeah. I was not, you were. Yes. Oh. Mazino, oh, yeah. we need to check certain things about uh, you. Three mm -hmm. of them were focusing on the glutes and the yeah. bum bum of the guy, of the instructor. <laughs> what? Because you know I was, was not there, Mike. Now you're not doing this to me. Mary was the most graphic. <laughs> She, no, even, she even went as far as telling those shenanigans that would happen yesterday. Wow. Which we probably might have to talk about. She talk about grab it. Maybe. <laughs> grab it. Please be careful. Grab uh, it. So, shenanigans yesterday. No. <laughs> it's post Valentine. What yeah. did you get up to? What did you see that was trending on the hmm. internet that you found very interesting? I found one very interesting. Yeah. What's that? Now, the fact that most people chose yesterday to celebrate love, I yeah. think you celebrate it all year round. Um, there was this guy who did something special. He went to a school for the hearing impaired mm -hmm. and he went there to guess what rap for Aww. the students. Mm. Now note that they're hearing impaired, mm. but he also went with someone who could do sign language and the kids found this very, very Fascinating. interesting. Aww. Yes, it was, it, was, it was something very different to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. It might not be the whole mushy lovey dovey yeah. thing that most people And then I, when I he left, that. he probably went to give his girlfriend something for Valentine. <laughs> 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 but my, my issue is it's showing exciting. love to everyone and anyone possible like mm -hmm. people are, are, are supposed to receive love every day like you said mm -hmm. but guess what if there's any other set of people that you know don't really receive love that regularly uh, yeah make sure you do it so that yeah. was really cool that, that was, was really cool. That was it nice. was cute what did you find yeah. that was interesting well me I found interesting certain things <laughs> like I'm sorry to say that I found it interesting, but girls fighting, I, I can't believe people are still fighting over men in this time and <laughs> age. Seriously. Mm. Uh, people posting on true stuff. Yeah. I received dollars, I received pounds, yeah. I received a brand new house, wow. I received a brand new, like, seriously. How do you know it's true? Please. Um, hmm. Many so of these things are not true. No, you sent it, it's Joru to Joru, that's what you call it. Wow. <laughs> and you give to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> that's self-love. Self -love. But it's self -love. amazing that the love language this year is material. Too material. So, you know, it's I mostly it's, money, and everybody's mm. flaunting it's that. It's always been It's usually like that, though. It was very really? different from years before. Is, is uh, there was, there's a particular uh, ex-BB housemaid that uh, said oh, her fans sent out our gifts. That's the Jerome Mike is talking about. Uh, all I, those I'm things just, are very so For me, shiny, I saw, yeah, I saw <laughs> this. Um, I, I, I don't think it was a recent video, but there's this guy who's, mm. you know, some of these guys that come up, they want mm. to give you some words of wisdom. This guy was yeah. giving about love, and then... Mm. He, he, what he was saying could make could, it looked like it made, made sense, but at the end of it, I don't know. I think maybe what this guy is saying doesn't make sense. The <laughs> guy is a big judge, he goes into the woods and he talks about how, look, if they tell you that they don't like Valentine or they don't like Valentine mm -hmm. games, uh -huh. that's a lie. You gotta use your common sense, guys. Mm -hmm. Kings, you gotta use your common sense. Get her a gift, make yeah. sure yeah. she did that. And the guy goes all along, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. and then he drops and says, Use your sense. Mm. But the guy forgot that, look, hey, it takes two to tango. Mm. It's not only one person in there. Mm. So if you don't receive from her, are you the one? Uh, mm. uh, that's a good point. So that. everybody mm. goes, well, everybody, I feel, look, yeah. I, I don't feel it is how it should be. Mm. Everybody, the whole attention is what is the girl receiving. Mm. Go online. 95% is, I, I mean, You're I saw someone who got, girl, who, got, who got a 30 million naira, this thing. Yeah. She got a car. She got, the, that's all we found. Guys, lies matter I saw too. one guy. No, but I, I, I saw agree. a guy. I saw a guy whose wife paid off a debt of 1.3 yes. million. Oh, that's yes. nice. It blew my mind. Yes. yes. And I'm like, look, well, we you it. have to understand, mm. for a lady, you cannot go into a relationship or a career and expect to always receive. So it's, thick, it's always two ways. It's safe to say give. then that the so. celebration of Valentine is one-sided and... I so I don't yeah, I, 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 because okay. most I'll, of the attention way, is always on the ladies apparent. Cuz I know I know what I did. It's 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 uh, I won't use the word coded, but private for us. Whatever I actually really want during that period, as long as you are able to provide it for me, to me, that is you showing love. Mm. It might be um, offsetting a debt, like mm. you said. It might be repairing something that was damaged. Mm. It might be re rebuilding our kitchen or mm -hmm. something. Something that is significant to me. It what did you give, ocean. however, so is what we're asking. What did you I, do? No, she, just she just said it's just said, 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 said It's very you know, Sorry, one minute. Just like mm. one skit again, I saw because me, I believe is a skit. So, this girl, 
she <laughs> you saw it, Abby. She gives this guy about. a brand new car. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It has like mm -hmm. something really mm -hmm. exciting, mm -hmm. and he's so happy. Yeah. And then the next thing, uh, she goes, "What did you get me for Valentine?" She's checking his pockets, and he's like, mm -hmm. "Oh, I have." Yeah. What? What I've always given you. <laughs> oh wow. wow. We're not gonna say. Wow. I dare say what what he was talking about was that yes, there are ladies who do that, but majority of what we see online and majority of what it is, it's lopsided. Yeah. yeah. But hey, come on. It's not lopsided. What are your thoughts? Anyway. What did you do on Valentine I'm yesterday? Still Let's know on social who media. Who did you do give that twenty-eight thousand dollar gift to you though? Which mm. gift? We'll you take know. a break now. Nice. We'll be back okay. immediately after this. Welcome to the kitchen this beautiful Tuesday morning, and to prepare breakfast this morning is Chef. Paul, I'm wondering where Peter is. All right, it's great to have you on the show this morning. Yeah, um, my name is Paul, as you yeah. said. Um, today, I'm happy to be here. Today. We are so pleased to have you. So what yeah. are we having for breakfast? Um, actually, I'm uh, making um, pineapple fried rice. Pineapple fried rice. Yes. Okay, I don't see any pineapples. Okay. Okay, don't worry, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Let's talk about all other ingredients, okay? okay? Yeah. All right, so um, here we have uh, rice. Regular rice. Yes. Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't can, have to be basmati or anything. Have basmati. Anyone you have. But this is normal rice. This is normal rice. Fant yes. Fantastic. I actually like this idea because okay. many people are always, you know, having that mindset. You have to make use of uh, basmati, basmati to okay, do all those areas. kinds. Okay, so what else? You have uh, like, um, you know, chicken stock. Yeah, chicken okay. stock. Uh, this is uh, pepper, ginger and garlic, onion. Okay. There is carrots. Yes, I shredded the... Uh, this is shaki. No. This is, uh, what, do, what does it look like? This, this? is beef, shredded beef. No, and, this one. Uh, this one this is chicken. Chicken breast, yes. Ah, we have, okay. We uh, have yellow bell pepper, okay. red bell pepper, and okay. green, green. Bell pepper. Okay. This is salt and oil. Salt and oil. Yes. Okay. Well, and of course, we're also going to make use of the pineapple. I'm going to make use of the okay. pineapple. Okay, so you're going to chop this, the onions. Yeah, I'm going to chop it into cubes. Okay. So I do give Same it with the pepper. Yes, some of the pepper. Okay, yes. just so it can match with the, with the bell, bell peppers. peppers. Yes. Okay, okay. R run us through the process. What should we be expecting? What's the first thing we're going to do, and how we're going to prepare this breakfast? Okay. Um. First of all, I have to boil rice. Okay. After boiling rice, I have to make the sauce. Okay. How do you make the sauce? First of all, I have to put um, the cheddar beef inside the um, fry pan or any pot okay. house, okay? Okay, oil the pan. Oil the pan, yes. Okay. Then add your oil, mm -hmm. add um, your chicken stock. Okay, the, ch the seasoning, the seasoning, powder yes. seasoning and the cubes as well. Add okay. carrots, okay. add the bell pepper, then turn everything together and okay. pour into the rice, then turn. Okay. Together with the pineapple. Okay, so w at what point does the pepper come in? Is it going to be boiling with the rice? No, it's not going to boil with the rice. It's going to come with the... With all, all the, of these peppers this as well, and the ginger, and the garlic, garlic everything, everything else. else. I'm also I'm going to use the pineapple juice Okay. to make it sweeten the rice. To sweeten the taste. Yes. And then we're also going to cut the pineapples into, into cubes. Into cubes, so yes. So okay, let's get so. started. Let's okay. get, let me grab the pot. Which okay. which of them do you want? Um, I would want this one and the uh, fry pot. Okay, yeah. all right. So now... Um, I've always wondered, because I like to, you know, okay. explore when it comes to food. I've always wondered, pineapple fried rice, pineapple fried rice. Can I, can I not do, like, pineapple f spaghetti? Have you ever tried that? Um, or pineapple to... macaroni? <laughs> okay, to or me, it's is, uh, is, is, is what you can come up with any time. Mm. Okay, like me now, this pineapple fried rice is what I come up with any time. Like, like, what was it, um, last month? Mm. I was okay. I was I was I was on my own. I was like, okay, what can I do to make everything different? Like the uh, fried rice to look um, different. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, let me add pineapple to it. Pineapple to it. Yes. Okay. Let's so sure. give you that pineapple fried rice. Okay. All right. So let's um, just quickly run you through all of the ingredients again. Mm -hmm. uh, check them out on your screen and scribble down whatever you might have missed. Okay. So it it seems to be a one pot dish. Everything goes into one pot. Yes. Everything is going to happen. Yes pretty fast. Yeah. So that, that makes it really exciting, if you ask me. Okay, so this carrots, you know, carrots tend to be very crunchy. Yes. Are uh, we going to have to cook it down, or you, there's still going to be that slight crunchiness to give, to add flavor? To me, I love, uh, I love my um, carrots to be crunchy. Okay. So I'm going to make it crunchy. Both the bell pepper, everything's going to be crunchy, so that you will get the taste of all of, of that. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I really can't wait for this dish to be <laughs> ready. Like, I'm super uh, pumped about it. Pineapple fried rice, Chef Paul's way, because I know we've seen different types of pineapple fried rice cooked on the show. 
this time is Chef Paul's way, and we cannot wait for it, okay? okay yeah. All right, so um, we're going to boil the rice here. Yes. Um, so are we going to wait for the rice to boil before we start with our stir fry, or would um, do the stir fry alongside? Yeah, I'm going to wait for the rice to boil. Okay. Because these ones are not, they are not, um, they are very fast to done with. Okay, okay. Most normal stir fry. Okay. The rice is the okay. main process. So we need there. to put the rice on now. So we're going to wash the rice now, put it on. And by the time we get back to the kitchen, we'll definitely have made progress. I know for sure Mike is on standby. Hi, Mike. I'm looking forward Definitely looking forward to what you have uh, ready when you're done. Chef Paul and Mary, I love that combination. Now, uh, let's go to health. And not being healthy, it should be, it has to be a part of our overall lifestyle. And one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Remile Kondurajai, she's here. We're talking about cerebral palsy. That's what we've been talking yes. about uh, the last week and even for how physiotherapy can help people living with the disorder. On, uh, of course, uh, health at Maine. She's a physiotherapist for over 33 years, the clinical director for Special Olympics, Fun Fitness Nigeria, and the physiotherapy screening arm of the Healthy Athletes Program. It's great to have you, Doc. Good morning. How are so, you? I'm good. I'm good. We've been talking about, uh, about um, cerebral palsy and physiotherapy and all of that. You know, it can, a lot of times we know cerebral palsy is something that uh, is at birth. A lot of people are born with it. Is this something that intended mothers can avoid? Is it something that maybe it's a lifestyle that causes it? What is the cause? Right, there really is no cause that has been pinpointed because all that the research has showed is that it can happen I before, either before, during, or after, after the baby is born. Mm. So there's really no definitive factor that they can say, okay, yes, this is the specific cause. Of and, are are there things that maybe the mother can do that will make the baby more susceptible to it? Are there issues? Are there well, things like when that? Cerebral palsy is one of many neuro, okay. uh, neuro diseases that can happen, um, neurodevelopmental issues that can happen with babies. And one of the there are many factors that can affect the integrity of the baby when the baby is born. Mm. Things like smoking, drinking. I mean, mm. there are a lot of things that can be part of your healthy, non-healthy lifestyle that may predispose to some of those things. But there's nothing that's really been pinpointed to say, okay, this, if you don't do this, this will happen. And then after, the, uh, after birth, so for someone who's not born with it, how does it come into the situation? How does it come into the, you know, the equation? Well, when a baby is born, typically they, will be, they should develop normally, or typically, as we would say. If your child is not developing typically, then there are things we call red flags. Mm. You know, if the baby is not lifting their head by one or two months, your baby is not rolling in the first three, four months, those are the signs to say that, okay, something might be wrong, which is why screening the babies, you know, they go for their well checks to their pediatrician, you know, you'll be able to pick up those things and identify that, okay, or if you, for some parents who've had previous kids, they'll be like, my other kids have, by now they would have done this. So those are sometimes some of the signs All right. that will indicate All that right. something So And then wrong. what's the next step to take when, this really, happens, when they happen? Really, physiotherapy is a key factor. Because at those early stages, one thing I mentioned where, where our specialty is movement. So when a baby is born, those first, the early years, three years, five years, is when, especially three years, a lot of your movement, the baby has head control, they start to roll, they start to sit, they start to crawl. So all of those things have to be, the baby needs to be taught how to do all those things. So physical therapy is very critical in those early years to get the kids to at least try to move towards those developmental milestones, which is what they're called. How much of control can they regain? If, if you were to give a ratio or a percentage, is it possible to regain almost all control? It's very difficult to say because cerebral palsy can affect a child in different degrees. There's like a spectrum. You know, they talk about a spectrum, spectrum with autism. Yes. So there are kids who you might not even know they have cerebral palsy. Sometimes still they start walking mm. and they have problems with their gait. Um, and there's some who are very severely, we call it motorically affected. And 
the, some of those kids may never actually sit on their own. They may never walk. But really, you don't know till you start working with a child. And only really time tells how well or not they're going to do. So we're saying that it's, um, it's something that is unique to each person, the yes. way they respond Ve to the particular so. treatment. But if, it was, if physiotherapy didn't come in early, much later in life, can it, can, can it help? It, it can, but your, the progress is going to be slower and not as much. And there are some kids who are born with severe disability. So physiotherapy is more of maintaining. We talked about maintaining their best possible function. And that is really within the scope of the child's limitations or disability. So it's difficult to say if they had started physio from one month, they'll be able to walk when they're two years old. Because there are some kids who, because they're severely affected, may never walk. But that doesn't mean you don't do physiotherapy. Because you still want to put them to stand, because that's what strengthens the bones. They, you still want their muscles to be moving. You still want them to gain full movement of their limbs just so that they can be taken care of much easier. So their activities of daily living and the care of them is not as dependent as it would have been. All right. Now, this is just to, um, to confirm. If, if, if it's not seen in a child at birth, is this something that can develop or start, someone can start seeing much later in life? Like maybe teenage, adolescent? Not that long, no. If it's something that would be picked up earlier, earlier than that. Oh, okay, yes. so it, if Typically, it's kind of... by the time they're walking... Okay, you, it should have been yes, there. Yes. Now, apart from the physical, the gait and the posture and all of that, what other effects, what other effects in the body uh, do we see it from cerebral it can, palsy? It can also affect their cognition, their ability to, their intellect thinking. And sometimes that... Be, and all those conditions that that affects is when school age, when they start two years, when they should start playing with puzzles, when they should start doing activities that involve thinking, mm. when you, those are absent. So and this dyslexia and all the, all the rest, yeah, those ones tests, are... There are tests that can be done to identify some of those can deficits. They, should they have a special school? Can they go to school with, um, with other kids? It's called inclusion. We inclusion. encourage that. We because, exactly. That's what I wanted to be. Yeah. That inclusion. Uh, so we can let them be, you know. Uh, they might need support depending on the severity. Okay. But like with any child, you develop based on the peers around you. Around you. So that helps. I'm not saying they will then become typical like the peers they're with, but definitely raises the bar for them a little. What can we do? Because we've seen a lot of uh, stigmatization from other kids. And some of them, uh, some of these young kids, might not really understand what it means to, you know, to, to be humane and all that. So what can other people do when you have people, uh, when you have someone who's suffering from cerebral palsy around you? What can we teach the kids? What can we teach other people in how, how well, how to relate with them? I mean, we need to teach them that we're all not alike. And we need to let people who have disabilities realize they have other abilities. And they're not different. They, they didn't, it didn't happen because somebody cursed them. It's just an incident of birth, mm. you know, and it could happen to anyone. Mm. So we need to sensitize like parents, that. and it's the parents who sensitize the children. The children. Exactly. And of course, whatever the art schools, the authorities should exactly. also sensitize. That's very, very important. Yes. Thank you very much, Doctor. It's always welcome. enlightening talking to you. You're welcome. All right, hope we're able Thank to pick you. something. And like uh, she said, inclusion, let's learn to be more you know, accept it exactly. and uh, let them know that, look, there's nothing wrong with you and yes, you are normal. All right, that's it. That's it on health for uh, this morning. We'll take this time out now. Quite a lot more to come on the show. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now we have our parenting segment coming your way at this point. And this is one I know a lot of moms especially will want to talk about. Budukwe Enila is here. Now she is the founder of I Mom Zone. It's a platform for mothers specifically for first-time pregnant new toddler moms. And uh, we're going to be talking about something very interesting today, how to manage your nannies and helps. Hmm. Now, I feel this is a bit too <laughs> wide for one episode. Yes, uh, But I, I appreciate the fact that you've come to talk to us about this today. Yes, Welcome back is. to the show. Thank you for having me again. All right. So first of all, what's the difference between a nanny and a help? Hmm. 
So yeah. <laughs> we don't know the difference here. Mm. We usually just say, oh, my nanny, my nanny, and your nanny mm. is doing your laundry, mm. when your nanny is meant to just take care of your kids. Okay. Your nanny's responsibility is, to, is, is your kids' welfare, while your help is to take care of the domestic affairs of the house, not taking care of your kids. So you need mm. to differentiate. Okay. Sometimes your nanny can also be your help, as long as you laid it out in her job description. Yeah. That, okay, so these are the things I want you to do. You're part of this. This is it. This is it. But, I mean, we need to be able to differentiate. If you're a nanny, you're a nanny, and your job yeah. is to take care of the kids and the kids' welfare. That's it? Yes. So uh, if, if uh, for instance, maybe there's... Um, hmm. Okay. <coughs> I wanted to think about age groups mm. uh, for nannies. For instance, if uh, uh, someone coming into your home is below a certain age, in my opinion, they shouldn't be classified as a nanny. They should mm. be classified as a help. Where, mm. where do you think that line should be drawn? What age? Hmm. Mm. So for me, it's, it depends on your experience. There's some, we have some 25-year-old nannies that are quite good and very professional. And yet we have some 40-year-old that are not as experienced or as good. The fact that their mother doesn't mean that they can take care of other people's kids. Yeah. So you need to lay out. For me, it depends on the value alignment. Okay. You need to be sure that your ground rules, um, the parenting style, your, your nanny won't come and enforce her own parenting style, style on you. On okay. you. Okay. So from the word go, from the onset, you need to set out, okay, this is how I do it here. Okay. If, you, if you can't adhere, mm. I don't think we can work together, but these are my values, mm. these are my rules, and I hope that we can Everything just... Everything you're saying now, mm. you're using the word values, you're yes. using rules. Yes. There's a certain level of uh, intellectual development mm. or education mm. before you can instill values or even talk to a nanny about rules. Mm -hmm. And it has become apparent that most of the people looking after kids these days are not very well educated. Mm -hmm. So where do you draw the line on that? It's you educating your nanny. It still okay. boils down to that pre hiring process where you lay down your job description. Mm. This is how I take care of my kids. Mm. This is what I do. And you need to, I mean, the first three, the first six months, you need to mm. monitor. Okay. Don't just leave it to the nanny that, oh, I already got the nanny, mm. we're good. Mm. You need to just come home unexpected, unannounced, just mm. come in to mm. check if she's doing it right. Mm. You need to have honest um, conversations mm. with, your, with your nanny. Mm. As soon as um, you see that she's not doing something right, call her attention to it immediately. Okay. okay. Immediately. Okay. So um, I want to think of some basic no-brainer rules that you should give a nanny when the, when the nanny is resuming uh, mm. in your home. So from the onset, this is someone brand new, is still considered a stranger in your home. What are the first things you should discuss? Those first few things. Hmm. Mm. It's still about your kids. Mm. One, parenting style. Okay. Parenting style, parenting mindset. It's, okay. You don't want your nanny to come and say, oh, I usually beat. Mm -mm. Okay. In my home, I don't beat and I don't shout. Okay. It's really important that you set down those rules. Um, eating habits. Okay. Food. So, so this is how... This is our meal prep, meal okay. time. Okay. Um, you need to set all those rules. Cleaning of the kids, um, the kids' room, okay. schedules, and all that. You need to just put all those things in place. I like that word schedules <laughs> uh, because uh, not a lot of people understand how to create schedules around their kids. And mm. even if they've created one, many nannies don't stick I to dare, it. Yeah. You know mm. what? I feel like this conversation is just way too long for yeah, the amount is. of time we have. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate you as always. There are a few questions you have out there. Please make sure you send those questions in to us and use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Ask the questions and I am on Zoom will be responding. Thank you so, so much. Thank for you for having us. me. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot to do as a parent, especially in 2022. But um, <clears throat> let's talk food at this point. We're heading to the kitchen. Yeah, I'm not just talking food, I'm working food as well this morning. Looks like I'm literally working for my breakfast. Welcome back to the kitchen. Chef Paul is still in charge this morning and we are making pineapple fried rice. Now, something interesting. We didn't show you the uh, pineapple earlier. So this is it. 
Uh, we are creating a boat out of the pineapple. Chef Paul, I think you should be the one to tell us what we're doing with this okay, pineapple. Um, right now, this pineapple, I will to serve as a plate for me. Okay. That's when I will be using to serve the, um, the rice. Okay. So of me using the mouth plate, I will use this pineapple. Okay. That's why it's called pineapple fried rice. So okay. I want to make the use all the whole pineapple. Okay. So right here, the juicy. Yeah. We are starting here, so I'm going to use it for the rice. For the well. rice as well. Yes. Are you pouring it into the rice to boil the rice? No, I'm going to pour one when, when finishing the rice. That is what the toppings are oh, used for the okay. rice. Okay, so that the taste of the pineapple we'll will be really we'll strong. Yes. Okay, so let's start with the um, stir okay. fry. Okay. Okay. So this isn't so difficult. The first thing you do is either you use your spoon or you use a knife to cut out the inner part of the pineapple. And then when you've done that, you can now begin to use a spoon to exactly. scoop it, okay? So that makes it easier for you, okay? So uh, our boat is ready. Two boats there. Okay. Here's the pineapple and the juice as well. Okay, so what is this? This is egg. Yeah, um, so we fried egg. Yeah, a couple of eggs earlier. Yes. Yeah, so because you know when you're having the pineapple fried rice, especially fried rice in general, you usually have to put in eggs, okay? So that's why we have to fry the eggs. So here's the egg. We still have our protein here, the pineapple and the juice, and of course uh, the pineapple for plating as well. Yes. Okay, so let's start with the stir fry. What's the first thing we're going to I'm do? Oil. Oil, oil, yes. Okay. Oil will go first. Okay. Not too much oil, I see. Mm, there's not too much not oil. Not too much oil, yes. okay. Okay, okay, after that. Mm -hmm. Add your pepper. Pepper before onions. Wow. Yes. Okay. That's the first, but I guess everyone has their style. <laughs> so after the pepper, then okay, you put in the onions. Put in the onion. Okay. Why did you put the peppers first? I wanted to extract the oil first so that the pepper should come out oh, very well. Oh, so you so, really want to get that peppery flavor. Yes, yes. So that's why you have to put the pepper yes. first. Okay. okay. Um, this is my ginger. Your ginger and your garlic. And the garlic. Okay. I'm going to cut it. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised at your style of cooking because <laughs> I know most times you put in the onions, the ginger and the garlic to really extract the flavor. Yeah, I but need, it seems the pepper goes first. I, why, why, I'm doing, why I'm doing this, um, okay. this pattern is because I'm... Um, I need every all the whole um, fragrance to come out okay. nice. Okay. I don't want everything to be well cooked. Okay. So okay. why you quickly chop that? Let's uh, take a look at uh, the ingredients. Okay. They are currently on your screen, uh, so you can quickly catch up with whatever you may have missed. All right. I know with all the ingredients on the table, you're probably wondering what did I miss. So just quickly scribble it. Okay, so now that's the garlic ready and then the ginger. So we're going to let the steam come out so it can cook faster, right? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So after putting in the ginger and the garlic, what goes in next? Um, there is, a, there is the meat will go the in. The meat will go in, yes. okay. After the meat the, and then egg. Okay. So after the egg, then... The, the, the bell peppers. Bell peppers, after the bell okay. peppers, then I will season it. Okay. With some seasoning, cubes, my vinegar and all of that. Okay. But are you deliberately crushing that or is there a reason for doing that? I'm crushing it. Why are you crushing it? So I want to get all the whole fragrance. I love, I love ginger and garlic in some of my food. Okay. I love, the, I love the taste. But the, putting it in the pan can't bring out the flavor the way you want it. It's true, but I, I prefer... You still want to extract yeah, prefer, it so yes, that you can yes, get it out. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. There's something magical about ginger and garlic, really. There's something really magical about it. When you have it in your food, it just takes over the entire home. Because the fragrance, the aroma of uh, the it's ginger and garlic sizzle. is amazing. Okay, so we will get on with our cooking here. We still have a lot to do. We still have to have the rice ready and all. But right now, we have reached the top of the hour. So we're going to take this break and then we'll be back for the next 45 minutes. Stay with us. It's Wake Up Nigeria. Now they say all good things come in pairs. Yes. So that's why there's always a second round for the show. Yes, mm. indeed. It's premium. It's homegrown and it's... Oh, it unites families yeah. all across the world. Yeah. Amazing things still happen here on Wake Up Nitro, and you're welcome. It's your favorite breakfast show, mm. and that's what we do. Make you happy and mm. loved. Yes. Yeah, speaking of love, mm. love is still in the air. And of course, our Wake Up Nigeria cookout is coming yeah. up. Something that our viewers should participate in. Mm -hmm. All we need to do is have you post a video on social media showcasing your love of cooking. 
Make sure you use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria Cookout and tag at TVC Connect. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Hey, we've got plenty of prizes for you guys when you do participate and you'll find that you actually needed these things, but you didn't know that you needed them. So, yeah, that's my little Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. that came In from. any case, take note that <laughs> if you post this up on Instagram, uh, uh, the more comments and likes that you get, yeah. the higher your chances of actually making the cut. So yeah. you'll be doing it for nothing. Just yeah. uh, edge out other people at first and then yeah. when you come in for the competition, you've got to buy yeah. against four other contestants and you might just win the grand prize oh, of... 100,000 Naira! Uh, 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 my name is Tite Laya Oyo. I was supposed to be for post-production. My name is Mazino <laughs> Peel. <laughs> Remember, you can use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC across all social media platforms to be a part of this fantastic show. You can also watch us live from absolutely anywhere across the world. Just use our mobile app, Google Play, iOS, no matter what you are using, we are right there. Ah, that's at TVC Connect on yes, all social media handles, okay? Remember, yeah. at TVC Connect. Now, for all we have lined up for the rest 45 minutes here, by the way, oh, Mary, Mary, mm -hmm. just wanted to say that we're smelling all of that beautiful <laughs> aroma. I, I can smell that. See. Yeah, see, it's very colorful too. My gosh, it yes, looks sir. amazing. Can, can yes, you just uh, tip this a bit? What? Want to tip yeah. it over? Just take mm. a look at this. My Ooh. gosh, it looks amazing. Yeah. And Ooh. I can't wait to dig into it. Even the rice is bald. Mm. See? So, All right. breakfast is soon to be served. Yeah. We can't wait. Tell you what, Mary, the food is not the only thing that's attractive in the kitchen because I must say this, you do look spectacular today. Oh, my Aww. goodness. Uh, Mazino. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Do you yeah. remember this term oh, from sure. secondary school? Which one? FFF. Uh, friends for, for food. food. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you guys what we're going to be talking about this hour here. We're going to be having a performance of our own right here in the studio. We'll have Victor, popularly known as Lapiz. Now, he's a fast-rising R&B Afropop act, and we can't wait to see the performance. Midas, we have an amazing guest coming your way. Very interesting conversation with an actor, executive producer, and director Prince Tony Ogwetere, popularly known as Big Tony. Now, he made his debut as a movie director with the movie What Goes Around. Apart from his work as an executive producer, Big Tony has also starred in a potpourri of diverse projects as an actor. Can't wait for that conversation. All Welcome right. back. Hey, mm. it's good to know that everybody got something for Valentine yesterday. Even mm. Abba Kiari got arrested. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Is that get, something you've got to do? It was. It was. Dry joke Tuesday. I'm wow. sorry. Oh my God. Now I enter. I'm with you on this one. Yeah? Oh so God. maybe because we're not on our Wednesdays, we'll do Tuesday and Thursday and work on our dry jokes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But then that video um, came out. Um, I saw the video and I know a number of people who. I mean, he has been a great guy who has been doing some things, so um, cracking some difficult cases, mm -hmm. you know, and there are people who were disappointed. Mm -hmm. People are disappointed and all of that. But uh, we know the law should take its due course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't, your reputation and your character are two entirely different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reputation, great one. Character, mm -hmm. maybe not as great. Yeah. Nice way He's been linked to so many things, actually. It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, we, we just really <laughs> hope that eventually the law takes its course and we yeah, know what's up. That However, it takes a smart mind mm -hmm. in certain <laughs> things to be able to crack certain things. So sometimes you just might be using your talents on what yeah, you practice. Yeah, maybe that's what we're <laughs> All these conundrums that's, that's, you're talking about here. Yeah. I'm telling you, I don't know where. I, I'm uh, Mary, to, there are certain Mary. situations where you have to be brushing very, the fringes of it all. Um, Tell you what, bro. before we get Mary in trouble, Thank you. let's do a break. What? We'll be right back. Welcome back, second hour here. Let's do the news. My name is Mazino Appeal, and we're starting with the formal handing over of DCP Abba Kiari to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency in Abuja, where he will be in custody. This happened yesterday after he was declared wanted by the agency over his involvement in a 25 kilogram cocaine deal. And Yelie says that the once celebrated Super Cup is now in the custody with four other suspects. The NDLEA, in a statement by its spokesperson Femi Baba Femi, gave the names of the suspects as DCP Abakiari, ACP Sunday J Abua, ASP Bawa James, Inspector Simon Agirba, and Inspector John Nuhu, who were driven into the national headquarters of NDLEA in Abuja at about 5 p.m. yesterday. 
They will now be interrogated by NDLEA and further investigation will continue. The agency assures that no stone will be left unturned to ensure that all suspects are already in custody and those that may still be indicted in the course of investigation will face the full weight of the law at the end of the ongoing probe. In a sting operation by the NDLEA Abakiari, the Deputy Commissioner of Police, who was suspended from duty after the United States named him in an indictment involving Raman Abbas, also known as Hush Puppy, was declared wanted by the NDLEA. He was suspected of being a member of an unnamed drug cartel. The agency says, following uh, intelligence, it believes strongly that DSP, or rather DCP Abakiari, belongs to a drug cartel. We now bring you the earlier clips of the operation, which shows the suspended a uh, D DSP in a car wired with sound and video recorders. Until his suspension by the Police Service Commission, Mr. Chiari was the officer in charge of the Inspector General of Police Intelligence Response Team. A.M. on Monday, January 24, after the agency gave the officer the green light to clear alarm, he and Gary began a WhatsApp call for the rest of the day. The officer conveyed their willingness in quotes to play the game. At this point, Gary disclosed that the 15 kilograms already taken out was shared between the informant that provided the information for the seizure and himself, as well as his men of the IRT of the Nigerian police. and arrested some traffickers that came into the country from Ethiopia with, according to him, 25 kilograms of cocaine. He proposed a drug deal where he and his team are to take 15 kilograms of the cocaine and leave the 10 kilograms for the prosecution of the suspects arrested with the illicit drug in Enugu. That's it for the news this morning. Here. Our nine video is confirmed. We've shown you guys the entire movie there, so congratulations. Like, I feel like just <laughs> yeah, let's just popcorn. Yeah, popcorn. <laughs> the chef to give us <laughs> In any case, you're welcome. Our final segment here, we've got our final guest. And for an interesting conversation, it is actor, executive producer, and also director, Prince Tony Ogbete, also known as Big, Big Tony. Tony. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> welcome, man. Yeah, it's so good to have you here. He made his debut as a movie director with the movie What Goes Around. Apart from his jobs as an executive producer, I should let you know that Big Tony has starred in a potpourri of diverse projects mm, as yeah. an actor. We just saw Fifth Avenue. What do you think? So you didn't do? <laughs> Take it easy. You like violence. That kind of thing you like. Yes, you should you have know. been born. You should have been born a Niger Delton. No, I was supposed to have been born a man. Well, let's not go into that conversation. We're talking about Big Tony now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Good to see you, man. Good to have yes, you here. Yes. Let's talk me. about your endeavors in the Nigerian movie space. You've been around for quite for, a while. Yeah. 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 How long exactly has it been? 25 years precisely. My Whoa. gosh. I, I was thinking, I know <laughs> you, I've seen you in several movies for mm. several years. Yeah. But man, 25 years never crossed that's my right, mind. Yeah. It's just one of those actors that yeah. you know is playing a major role in the industry. Mm -hmm. However, you just feel he'll always be there, Sha. <laughs> and he will always be there. Let's talk Definitely. about the evolution from 25 years ago to now. What's, what's different uh, from, from before? Okay. Um, when I started in 1997, um, that was the era where we were doing movies with better cam cameras. Mm. Uh, our stories were not as cool as they are right now. Mm -hmm. Um, we've received a little bit of training in yeah. terms of cinematography. So, mm -hmm. we, 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 where we are right now is, um, for me, we have had a learning curve from then mm -hmm. and now. Yeah. Uh, and I can proudly say that um, the kind of things that I see on Netflix today that we do here in Nigeria, it's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I wish we did this earlier. Mm. True. I wish Word. we did this earlier. Uh, I believe that the industry will have had more respect than it has mm. right now. Mm. Uh, when I started out in 97, for me, it was just a passion. Mm. I just wanted to do this. I was not looking for any fame. I was mm. not looking for, yeah, if the money was going to come, I was going to yeah, do it. Yeah, because you have to feed your family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but somehow I got pressured out of the industry for nine years oh, wow. because I got a regular job um, okay. in another company and mm. um, I just couldn't turn down the job. Of oh. course. Uh, <laughs> but because of my passion for the business, you ended I, up back. I, I, I had to still keep 
my presence in the industry. Okay. And that's when I took on the new role as an executive producer. Nice. Yeah. Wow. So I was now investing my money. Now I get it. Wow. Now I, I see that. I started producing movies like once every year. And when you produce movies, you, it seems like you had a message to pass across. Like yeah. Fifth Avenue we just saw now is something that's quite relative to you mm. as uh, a Delta-born uh, uh, individual. From, yeah. You're from Delta State, yeah? Yes. yeah. Uh, Isoko, if, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm from there myself. And I've, right. I know what goes on in the Niger Delta. I've yeah. been to places where there's so much Wahala when it comes to the um, oil, oil palava. Uh, palava. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So is that intentional? That uh, yeah, every, every project that I get involved in has some kind of thematic relevance to society. Mm -hmm. uh, my first production was Dirty Diana. Mm -hmm. it, was, it addressed prostitution as, um, oh, okay. as, a, as, a, as a topic. And then The Prodigal Brother was um, something that highlighted how young people from, especially Wari, mm -hmm. come to Lagos with maybe little or no education. Mm -hmm. And they make it in the comedy business. Mm. I will, I'm, I'm actually going to ask you a question about that, but please go on. Yeah, so that was that was that was the 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 theme that I addressed yeah. with the Prodigal Brother, mm. and then in um, in if I let me not just go through each project <laughs> yeah. like mm -hmm. that. Every single project that I've done has something that I address as an issue. Mm. You just saw Fifth Avenue; mm -hmm. it addressed militancy in the Niger Delta mm -hmm. and how the oil companies are causing a lot of pollution there. Yeah. Um, you see scenes in this movie where people go to farm, they plant their crops, and somewhere down the line there's a pollution, yeah. and then the crops are damaged beyond. And then mm. the guys are like, this oil that we have, is it a curse yeah. or is it a blessing? Yeah, yeah. I saw the Richard Oniga part where exactly. she was like, this oil yeah. is safe. Yeah. And then, you know, you mentioned the comedy aspect. Yeah. What I wanted to ask has to do with the fact that we have so many skits now. Yeah. There, are there have been people who have talked about how skits are now getting out of control. Like that mm. guy that was abusing his girlfriend for supposedly catching her cheating. Yeah. Only okay. for it to turn out to be a skit. A skit yeah. And so... I don't know what your thought is about the skit industry in mm -hmm. Nigeria and if it has any effect on acting itself. Yeah, true. Nice one. Nice I'm, one I'm not, not going to lie to you, man. When they started this skit thing, uh, I started telling people that if there's no control, control over it, mm -hmm. it's going to go overboard. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly where we are right now. Yes. I said it before it happened. I, I, am, I, am, I, am, I am not a prophet. Mm. But I tend to see a lot of things before they happen in the industry. Mm. Because you've been there for a while, yeah. true. Yeah. There are things that I said around 2001. Mm. People didn't believe me. They were even telling me that um, I'm, I'm a prophet of doom. Mm. Mm. When they started happening in 2006, they said, ah, you said it. Mm. Now, see, there, there has to be some kind of restraint in everything we do. Mm. I tell my comedian colleagues, that my, my, the guys are, that are close to me who are comedians, I tell them that, look, there are some jokes you don't crack. Mm. There are some jokes that are beyond what you say in public. Mm. If you're in a campus where you have students, there are jokes that are tailored for students. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if you go to a campus and you're cracking jokes that are beyond the level of students, you have gone overboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some things that we should not put out there mm. in our skits. Even our music. Mm -hmm. I have a serious quarrel with our artists. Music videos in particular and the As lyrics. far as I'm concerned, it debase the female child mm. in our videos yeah. and even in, the, in our lyrics. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So, entertainment generally is supposed to pass a message across the society, and I mm. believe that message should be positive. Mm. The message should help us build the society. Mm. The message should enable us to have um, a heritage that we can be proud of as a people, as yeah. Nigerians, mm. as, as Africans. Yeah. When you start doing skits where you put in some elements that are that exceed reasonable discretion, mm. then mm. You, have, you, have, you, have, you have gone beyond what it should be. Mm. And back to your question, how does that affect the movie industry? What it is doing to us is um, certain things that we thought we had outgrown it, it, it looks like we are back to them again. Yeah. 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 You understand? And the reason is very simple. Majority of these guys who do these kids are not trained. No, mm. no, no, no. it's true. just passion. They just, it's just raw. Yeah. Anybody just that has a, a very camera. beautiful phone yeah. Yeah. with a camera that records. Is a skit maker. Is a skit maker. <laughs> so, <laughs> tell you what, Big Tony, let's do one of your material here. Uh, and then when we get back, we've got something very, very delicious. Maybe Breakfast. a question or two oh, okay. <laughs> in the yes. kitchen. But we'll be giving you something you're going to like. So, yeah. let's check this out. We'll be back. All right, Fine, thank you. Yeah. Mm.
movies. Yep. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, but I like what you said about um, always having a theme for everything and uh, keep up the good work. The theme well for done. this is pineapple fried rice. Well done. Yeah. Right. So, so pineapple just, just is the main look. theme. Check it. <laughs> okay. Just Please, try it. Just pineapple is my dip. favorite fruit. Oh, wow. wow. See? Uh, so As if we knew. <laughs> and then rice is also... Yeah. Your favorite, favorite food. food. Yeah, I can eat, I can eat white rice in the morning, jollof rice in the afternoon, and fried rice for banga dinner. rice for dinner. And to me, those are two three, three different Three different meals. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Finally, someone who is honest about their rice love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. This is nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is nice. Thank you very much. You okay, so much. Uh, that's about it on the show today. Thank you so much for being a part of Wake Up Nigeria. Mm. Uh, I know Titi and uh, Mazino cannot mm. wait to join us in the kitchen uh, for breakfast, but it's all good. Got you guys again. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank Enjoy you. your day. Bye bye. Bye, bye everybody. <laughs>